Well, good morning, good morning, good morning. Good morning. Good morning. It is good, good to be in the house of the Lord. Yes, it is. Yes. And David said, I was glad when they said, let us come into the house of the Lord. Yes, amen. And I, mean, I can understand. Yeah. Depending on what your week was like or what you've yes. been through. Yes. Some weeks you're more glad than other weeks. Yes. <laughs> and I'm definitely glad to be in the house of the Lord. Amen. You know, I was here for Tuesday night study, Bible study, and then... For the rest of the three or four days, I've been in the house ever since Tuesday. Mm -hmm. Today was the first day I actually came out the house since Tuesday. Mm -hmm. but, uh, so, but it's a good time of rest. Yes. <laughs> Sometimes <laughs> God tells you just to rest. <laughs> and since I ain't got to go get out there and make and punch nobody's clock, yeah, I can just rest. <laughs> you know, so God is good. Amen. Amen. Lord, I thank you for this morning. I thank you for your spirit. I thank you for the word of truth. I thank you for your faithfulness in all things, Lord. I thank you that you have declared in the heavenly realms. And what you've declared, we will see in the earthly realms. And Lord, nobody can hold your hand. Nobody can stop what you said. Nobody can say, why have you done this to me? Or why have you done this to my loved ones? Whatever is done, we know you've done out of love and mercy. And you continually watch over us because we are the sheep of your flock. Yes, Lord. And we thank you that you're a faithful shepherd, Lord. We pray for those that are in harm's way wherever they may be around the world, Lord. I pray for them. I pray for anybody suffering. I pray for anybody going through. Yes, we pray for anybody that needs a touch, anybody with a negative medical report, Amen. anybody with anything that tries to bring a concern or make yes, their spirit drop. Amen. We know that no matter what we go through, Lord, you are still in control. Amen. And we pray for everybody that needs a healing this morning, Lord. And I pray that uh, yes, you just Lord. touch myself, my family, and all yes. those around me, my yes. loved ones, my yes. church, Lord. Yes. And everyone that those that I don't even know, Lord, mm -hmm. anybody that needs a touch, mm -hmm. even one that considers, considers himself my enemy, Lord, I mm -hmm. pray for their well being Amen. too, because you commanded mm -hmm. us to pray for our enemies. Mm -hmm. And Lord, we pray for all these different wars and things going on around the world. Lord, we yes. pray for man hating man mm -hmm. that this, this evil will just leave us, Lord. Yes. We know that. There won't be peace on earth until you return. But Lord, let us just get along better than we have been. And let us look and see that there for the grace of God goes myself. And I thank you for all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Well, today's message is called History with Revision Has No Vision. History with Revision Has No Vision at All. If you've been watching the local news and are been up with what's going on, there's been a movement in Florida to teach how African Americans benefit from being slaves. Mm. And it's going to be their new curriculum for 2024, or 2023 social studies. Curriculum will include lessons on how the slaves develop skills that could be used for their personal benefit. So, and if you look at it, history, the term history, historical revisionism is the means by which the historical record and history of a society is understood and its collective memory continually accounts for all the new facts and interpretations of events that are commonly <laughs> understood as history. So what that all that is saying is, you know, when you get down into historical revisionism, we can correct something from the past that was wrong because we received more knowledge. You know, like I've tried to tell people that used to argue with me about the King James is the only version and all that. And I would tell them what the King James was written in 1618. Back then, if you had a cold, they put leeches on you. and <laughs> let it suck it out of you. And back then, you know, if you needed surgery, you just cut, cut you open and sold you without any kind of, uh, you know, any kind of anesthesia. So I said, but as things progressed and we got better, then we realized that, uh, you know, things are better once you get more knowledge. And so I would ask them, do you want to use a doctor from 1619 or do you want a doctor from today to look at you? Amen. You know what I'm saying? So when we gain knowledge and wisdom, it doesn't eliminate what we knew, yeah. but it gives us more knowledge as a foundation that we can build on. Amen. And so sometimes you go back and revise history. And there, I was watching this comedian yesterday on CBS News, and he was making fun of how they tearing down all their Confederate heroes. 
And he's talking about they taking all of our history. And they're talking about Stone Mountain, Georgia. For those of you who don't know, Stone Mountain, Georgia is a monument to the Confederate soldiers. And it has General Lee and all their heroes from the Confederates are on Stone Mountain. They carved them in the mountain like they did with Mount Rushmore. But this is the Confederate answer to that. And when I tell people, you know, to me, the whole Confederate thing is you're celebrating the terrorists that attacked the United States of America. That's the bottom line. These people tried to overthrow the government of the United States of America, and they wanted to create a new country, and they created their own president, their own currency, their own states. So that were terrorists that you celebrate that attacked the United States of America. And that's our history. And I, no, no, no. Look at what it was. Cause, and I've had black people tell me that Confederacy was their heritage. And then I tell them, well, you know, the white girl that you're dating right now, if it would have went the other way in that Confederacy, you wouldn't be doing that. <laughs> you, know, you know, it just, that's what it was, <coughs> bottom line. Right. And these friends, your good old boys you go hunting with, well, they be hunting you. So <laughs> let's just think about it, you know. So when we try to revise history, and our history of our nation has a lot of things it's a shame of, a lot of things it's done wrong. But the thing about history is you have to tell it like it was. So it does not get repeated. Amen. When people hide, you know, I, I watch Finding Your Roots all the time on uh, Channel 11 with PBS. And it talks, you know, he's always finding things in people's family they didn't know. And people are shocked. Some people come to tears. Some people are fascinated. And uh, he, he did, uh, Angela Davis, she was a radical back during the 60s and 70s and protested and everything. Well, they did her history and found out one of her relatives was the preacher on the Mayflower. <laughs> when they came over, she is directly related to the preacher that helped come over and found America on the Mayflower. Wow. And, and it blew her mind. Really? <laughs> you know, I realize she'd been protesting all these things about the country and how it wasn't right. And she was from the founders. You know, so I'm just saying, you never know what history holds and who was with who and who did what to who. But the thing about it is some people are afraid to talk about history because they think about punishment. And they don't want you to do to them what they've done to you. And they don't understand Christian forgiveness. They don't understand time. Things that happen in one generation, several generations down, can say, well, that wasn't me. And then we can move on. I can't blame the sins of the fathers on the sons of today. Amen. Is what I'm saying. Amen. But as I'm looking at this whole anti-woke movement, and everything is anti-woke, anything that does not glorify the dominant culture in America today, they feel is uh, against them. So I watched this rise of this Florida governor and how he is just bought into this full suit. And if you look at Mussolini, if you look at Hitler, you look at any Kim Jong-un, any dictator, the first thing they do is get everybody to believe that what they're saying is the truth. And then we're going to take back what's ours. You know, I was, as I was saying last week when I saw the governor from Oklahoma, the former governor, saying she missed the Tea Party. Is it the Tea Party were crazy and take our country back and all that? But at least you could talk to them. The new movement is so crazy that nobody can handle it. I remember when I was talking to the leader of... Uh, of the disciples a few years ago back in it when we were having all these shootings in the row and I was talking to him over there in Hillcrest and he was saying that insane deuces was a part of him and he said they think they're a part of us and he said you know nobody can control them and he said I'm just glad they're on our side <laughs> but he was saying these boys are so crazy and what they do and stuff he's just glad that they think they're disciples because <laughs> he didn't want to be on the other side of them and he said they come by and tell me what they're doing and stuff and I was okay cool you know y'all keep doing what you're doing but he let them do their old thing. And that's kind of the way it is, you know, when you're looking at the political thing of today. And I'm looking at Florida and how this, they're racing to eliminate banned books. You know, banning books. They, they banned uh, Maya Angelou's biography. Saying that, you know, it talked about how she was raped and what she went through in the South and all that stuff. And her book is being banned. Now, when you ban somebody's history, that was true history. But you don't want your kids to read that. We, we, we get, you get into problems. Which books do you ban? You know, you want to ban Dr. Seuss. You heard all that. They say Dr. Seuss was racist. Well, he may have been racist, but his books weren't. <laughs> you know, his books were made a lot. When I had to sit there and read, read those Ned readers and all that stuff and see Jip Run, see Jip Run, it was boring. But when you read Dr. Seuss, it rhymed and, you know, it taught you to read. 
But I'm just saying, whether you, whichever side you're on, when you get to trying to revise history, mm. you, you, you know, history that is revised without vision is dangerous. Mm -hmm. And you got to think down the road because the people that are in charge today may not be the people in charge tomorrow. Mm -hmm. And when you make laws today that fit where you are today, and then the laws change later on, or the Supreme Court changes later on, and all these things, you know, if you watch our history, it swings back and forth. It always has, you know? <laughs> I remember, uh, who was it? One of the Justice Kennedy, he was put on the court, not Kennedy, I can't remember by, but he was put on there by Eisenhower, and he turned out to be liberal after he put him on the court. <laughs> he thought he was a good, solid, conservative Republican, and then when he got to reading the cases and seeing how people were mistreated and everything, he went the other way. Yeah. He he went for what's right over what people expected him to do. Yeah, yeah. So that's what I'm just saying. You know, as I look at all these things going on, and you say, well, what's that got to do with the Bible? What's that got to do with being in the church on Sunday? What I'm telling you, as a believer, we have to know what's going on so we'll know what to pray against. Yeah. Amen. 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 Yeah. We've got to know. Mm -hmm. And we've got to realize you can never win anybody to Christ by telling you how much you hate them and how much you want to destroy yeah. them. Because if God has put them on this earth, they're here for a reason. Yeah. And if God has put them, they, they belong to God. Mm -hmm. You know? Mm -hmm. And regardless of whether you don't agree with the church they go to, you don't agree with what they do, that's not your decision. Amen. They have another master. Amen. So as I was reading in Haggai, mm -hmm. chapter 2. It's one of the little books. And it talks about when the old temple how beautiful it was and what the church used to look like. And then the old people sitting around talking about what things used to be like. You know, I, I've lived in Aurora long enough that I remember where we didn't lock our front door. You could leave your bank, yes. your bicycles outside. You could leave yes. your keys in the car. Yeah. I mean, I remember when Aurora was that type of city that you could just basically everybody knew everybody in your neighborhood. Nobody really had any problems. And Aurora never really was based on race. It was based on income. Because all, all the people that worked at Caterpillar, all the people that worked at whatever, they all lived in the same neighborhood. And, you know, and I never hear, and the people with real money lived over there by the country club. Mm -hmm. So none of us could get over there anyway. <laughs> so, so, whether you was white, black, or whatever, we, we couldn't get over where they were. And it was amazing when I see around the country club and I see all these homes that I remember my dad used to have a garbage service and he'd pick up the cans and we'd ride around in that area. And I see now that whole area is totally transformed. It's totally different. Most of those families are all gone. You know? So I'm just saying, as you look at things, and I'm looking at Haggai, and the people sitting around talking about how it used to be. The good old church. Y'all, this church ain't nothing. You should see the church we used to have. <laughs> you know? People always, you know, people tell me, this ain't music. You, I find myself getting caught in it. <laughs> I used to argue with my children. All your music is stolen from my generation. <laughs> they, they sampling. Sampling is stealing. None of y'all have creativity. None of them can play an instrument. None of them have any skill. We used to have these debates with them back and forth. I mean, like Stevie Wonder played several. It's the only one I liked was Alicia Keys. Alicia Keys can play all this stuff. She had talent. And if you got to shake and gyrate to get the people to listen to you perform, then you're missing something. You know? I'm just saying, you should be able to take your talent and stand there and dig it without all your body parts hanging out and all this gyration to get people to listen to you. I mean, it's just that the difference between talent and not. And, you know, even with Tony Bennett dying this week, Tony Bennett always carried himself with dignity. Amen. And he was fought with the civil rights. It cost him jobs. It cost him friends. But he always was on the side of what's right. He was right there with Sidney Poitier and Harry, Harry Belafonte. He was there with King. He was there fighting for what's right. Amen. You know, and I'm just saying, when people have talent, you don't have to have a dog and pony show. Right. So I'm, saying, I'm looking at all this stuff. They're blowing up all this stuff. Beyonce that took over the soldier field. I, remember, I can remember Diana Ross standing there with just a microphone and singing. Uh -huh. <laughs> you know, right. I'm just saying. Yeah. You know, I'm, I'm just you know I'm 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 of, I'm of that group at that age. Right. But I'm just saying, <laughs> ain't anybody cussing me out, shouting at me to get That's the message right. across. Right. You know, I don't know. And I'm, <laughs> They used to talk about the jazz age and how good it was. And, you know, and you should have heard her ballad. You should have heard when I was growing up, they talked about their age. So I guess we all have our thing. But today, you're making all this synthetic music. The computer, they, now they're worried about AI taking over. 
that computers can totally replace you. You know, it sounds science fiction, it sounds far out, but they, these artists are not mad because these computers are imitating their voice, their style, and everything else, and they're not getting paid. Right. Right. So you, you know, digital, you can download. Why should I buy an album from you when all I got to do is click a button? I'm just saying. It's, it's rough. People talking about intellectual property. But anyway, it had guy too. On the on the twenty first day of the seventh month, the word of the Lord came through the prophet Haggai. Speak to Zerubbabel, the son of Shealtiel, the governor of Judah, to Joshua, Joshua, the son of Josedek, Josedek, and the high priest, and to the remnant of the people, ask them, who of you is left who saw the house in its former glory? How does it look to you now? Does it seem like nothing? <laughs> Does it seem to you like nothing? But now, be strong, Zerubbabel, declares the Lord. Be strong, Joshua, son of Zodek, Josedek, the high priest. Be strong, all of you people of the land, declares the Lord. And work, for I am with you, declares the Lord Almighty. Yeah. So when people talk about how this generation changing, that generation changing, and all this other stuff going around the world, done went crazy. You know, it's just amazing. When I was towards the end of my working career, people talking about you don't want unions. Unions are a bad thing. And unions created the middle class. Mm -hmm. I don't care what nobody says. Yep. If you look back at history, mm -hmm. when the factory owners had little kids working in the factories, losing their arms and all that, and you eight to 10 years old, you working a full shift, you know, the unions brought in changes. They brought in vacation. Amen. There wasn't, they brought in, they brought in funeral pay. <laughs> they brought in breaks on your job. You know, the unions brought all this in, and all these young people, took, they taking your money. And they ain't talking about Social Security. Get rid of that. You know, there's a lot of people that get into investments. Mm -hmm. But during the 2008 crash, how many people lost everything they had? Mm -hmm. Especially if you and your wife worked at the same place, and you had the same retirement program. And when that program was wiped out, like with teachers and stuff, they lost everything. And they were giving waitresses that made $11 an hour a $200,000 mortgage. Mm -hmm. And no, she couldn't make it, but they made the money off of selling it to one. And that one, everybody made money but the waitress. And then somebody had to eat that and they passing it off, passing it off. So I'm just saying, you know, people try to tell you about things of one generation and tell you it's no good. But they got to look at it. There's a lot of things that made a lot of sense that God brought about. So we look at this form of glory and you look at what today is, oh man, the world's all messed up. <laughs> Some people glad that they're getting close to the end. But he says, keep on moving, keep preaching, teaching, mm -hmm. show patience and love and forgiveness. Mm -hmm. And above all, show charity. Mm -hmm. It may seem like it's nothing to you, but in spiritual realms, mm -hmm. be strong and keep on working. That's what God is saying. You know, it may look like the whole world is going crazy. And you don't know what your grandkids are going to face and their grandkids are going to face. But he said, you keep working. You keep doing what God Amen. called you to do. You keep being that prayer warrior. You keep standing on the wall. You keep being that which is holding back what is to come. Because if it weren't for you, it would come even quicker. So if you want this thing to turn around and go back and you want all this hatred and all this jealousy to be replaced... You got to keep praying. You got to keep yeah. doing what God called you. You, you, We in the world, but we not of the world. We can't let the world get in us. We got to keep maintaining what God has called us to do. Amen. And what he's saying, people look at it, it don't seem like nothing today. You know, on the way to church, my grandson and I, we were riding, we seen a, a Boss Mustang, a 69 Mark 1, blue with a stripe on it. With the, and I told him, there's, there's my dream car. That, that, my email, though, you know, is Boss Mustang 1969. For those of y'all that don't know, but and I saw this boss, and I told Tommy, "Ah, there it is, <laughs> my car," and it took me back. But that Boss Mustang, as bad as they were in 1969, and everybody I knew had one, had hit a tree because it would literally jump off the street. They hit that car on King Street, they hit a tree, bang! It, almost everybody tore them off there, you know. And that's why there's so few of them left because they, they were fast with bad brakes. <laughs> you know? But then if I look at the fastest 440s and all them charges today, and right now it'd be like a pimp compared to these cars today. Right. Now, I mean, you was lucky to get 400 horses back then. Now they're getting 1,400, 1,600. You, know, you got a jet on wheels, right. basically. Right. You know, a Lamborghini and something, 250 miles an hour. 
You know, I used to get excited running 100, 120. I can't imagine 250 miles an hour. You, you have to have a strong heart to drive that. And then the thing about it, if you got something that runs 250, where you gonna open it up at? You hit one of them potholes in Chicago running 250 miles, you try to get on a dead ride and go straight through. And somebody drunk get on the rim, <laughs> you running 250. I'm just saying, 250 miles an hour with our road conditions, it won't work. But as you look at how fine and everything was then, you think about it back then, but now it's better. Even in the midst of things being worse, it's better. I used to complain about how slow the checkout lines are. Now they disappear. Right. Now I am the checker. <laughs> <laughs> and people slow. That woman is the slowest checker. I used to talk about the people. Now I'm scared of the bagging and carrying my own stuff out the store. I mean, just think about some yeah. things you complain about. I used to put on Facebook, this Walmart is the worst one in the yeah. world. The Kirk Road, don't go here. It's terrible, man. I'll be in line again. Wait. Right. And then I, now I look at, boom, I am the line. <laughs> so just, just keep on living. Uh -huh. But I just said, boy, <laughs> but you got to keep on preaching and teaching. Amen. Amen. Keep serving. Yeah. Yeah. This is what I uh, covenant with you. When you came out of Egypt and my spirit remains among you, do not fear. So with all the craziness in the world, I feel the spirit of the Lord is still in me. Uh -huh. He's still calming me. Yes. He's still guiding me. Amen. I don't care what report I get or what anybody else says. Some people may say, well, you ain't showing enough emotion. Because I have the calmness of Christ in my life. Amen. And he's taught me not to fear. Uh -huh. He's taught me not to panic when something happens. He's taught me to just wait. You have not seen the end of the matter. Right, right. And so many people spend time worrying about what might happen that they miss what is happening. Amen. So, you know, people worry about this and worry about that. What happens to this? I remember when we first bought our house, I was just like, hey, I don't know how long we're going to be in this bad boy, but we're going to go in it. <laughs> We've been in it almost 20 years. God, God is still, he's hell. I'm just saying, but he's, you know, when I started the church, how are we going to pay for this? And where's the money coming from? Now it's paid for. Yeah, yeah, I'm just saying, yeah. you know, some of the things you worry about. Uh -huh. And I can remember struggling, trying to pay 65 a month for a pencil note. <laughs> Don't you know somebody gave me a new car for $65 a month? <laughs> right. I do backflips. Right. <laughs> yeah. Complained about gas being 48 cent a gallon. <laughs> you know, 48, think back now. Some of y'all can go there with me. Wait, yeah. <laughs> I remember my mom going to the uh, gas station, the Clark yeah. gas station on New York Street. Give me $2 of ethyl. Yeah. And that old 61 yeah. Chevy be on a half a tank with $2 yeah. of ethyl. Yeah. Yes, yes. And she's on $2. That was, I, never, I, don't, I can never remember her going over $2. <laughs> but she you always know, put me $2. <laughs> you know? And they came out pumping. Yeah. That was another thing that's changed, you know? Yeah. But I'm just saying, some of the things of one generation, yeah, yeah. you just don't know. Bread was 15 cents and all that. That's, now y'all going back and dating myself. Wow. Now 15 cents won't even buy you a slice of bread. <laughs> but God continues to calm me. And this is what the Lord Almighty says in a little while. <laughs> while I will once more shake the heavens and the earth and the sea and the dry land, I will shake all nations and with what is desired by all nations will come and I will fill this house with glory, says the Lord Almighty. Amen. The silver is mine. The gold is mine, Amen. declares the Lord Almighty. Amen. The glory of this present house will be greater than the glory of the former house, all right, all right. says the Lord Almighty. Amen. Amen. And in this place, yes. I will grant peace, declares the Lord Almighty. You know, sometimes you look at why did things change or why did this happen and that happen? But you know, churches are empty now and people aren't coming. It's, it's just, you know, people feel like they don't have time for God no more. Mm -hmm. And they don't need God. People making their own selves God. Mm -hmm. People talking about their priestesses and, and, and they, you know, they got all these, they, they got their own form of spirituality. Mm -hmm. And the traditional church is not what they're looking for. You know, everybody, everybody's got their own God, their own God thing. They out here, they got enchantments and spells and good luck charms and, and wicker stuff and, and crystals and, and all this other stuff. Rabbit foot for luck. I don't know what else. They still pop it. But I'm just saying, you know, all this is a form of godliness in their own mind. But the Lord said, I'm getting ready to shake everything. 
all this stuff they think that you know they selling and you know it's, it's gonna be a shaking is what God said. Mm -hmm. When I look at the whole world as a whole, we got climate change, deadly disease, disasters on every level. Man's inhumanity to man is very evident. He's shaking all nations. I don't care where you go. You know, I was talking to some friends of mine on Facebook about this soldier that ran into North Korea because he was in trouble with the army. You know, I don't care what he did in the army. Going to North Korea is not a good. And he's a black man in North Korea. That's that. So they're going to find you wherever you are. <laughs> I don't know how many black people are in North Korea, but I say the population is pretty low. <laughs> you know, so. But this brother ran into Korea <laughs> to get away from the army's discipline. And so if he had read a news article from a few years ago when the young man they beat to death for taking pictures in the hotel and they beat him till he almost died and when they released his body back to his parents he died within a week or so. Yes, yes, yes. They beat him for taking a picture in a hotel when he wasn't supposed to. And if you look at anybody else they did, did you feel like I can go to North Korea and get saved? Craziness, mm -hmm. inhumanity, mm -hmm. people torturing their own people, killing their own people. You know, Dracula, the story came about because in, in, in the castle, people were coming to attack this king and he hung some of his own subjects yeah. on the wall and put the bodies all around him and they turned back. Right. It was so much evil, uh, so much crazy. This man's killing his own people, you know? So they, they went back and then she had the idea for writing Dracula, you know? But I'm just saying, when man is so inhumane, when you see somebody suffer, you see somebody going through it, well, it could be a setup. Right. This dude, oh, they got, they got their four ways on, so well, uh, that's probably a setup for a robbery. Right. You know, everybody got cell phones, they can call somebody. Yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah. you keep on rolling. Yeah. I remember one time <laughs> we were in Chicago and somebody threw a snowball and hit our car. Yeah. And I told Jesse, we're gonna keep going. Yeah. Cause they expected me to get out and cuss yep. them out for throwing a snowball at my car. I said, we, we gonna keep going. Right. <laughs> you know? Somebody bump you at a light and you jump out and cuss. No, 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 we gonna keep on running. Right. You know, I got good insurance, we'll keep on running. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> you know? But I mean, you know, it's just man is in, in humanity to man. Yeah. And then people denying climate change. Yeah. <laughs> Saying it's a liberal thing. <laughs> yeah. Liberals want to take, they want to stop production. They want to stop drilling for oil. You know, and the people in Florida talk about, you know, they want to drill for oil. Today, don't they remember the big oil slick they had a few years ago? When Florida and all the ducks yeah. was trying to be washed with Dawn and all that? Right. They forgot all that. Right. No, we want to drill here. We want to drill there. You know, we need to get off oil. Get off your addiction. We have other things. Get off that addiction. The Middle East is holding you captive. Why? Because you're addicted to oil. Right. You know, but hey, I ain't making the money they make. They're selling one generation to another generation. Just like Hezekiah said, it ain't happening in my day. Right, right. They're going to come and lead your grandchildren captive and all that. Hezekiah said, well, it ain't going to happen in my <laughs> right, day. Right, right, right. That's a lick on them. but I, yeah, yeah. Right, right, right. And that's where we are as, as a nation. Then he talks about on the 24th day of the ninth month in the second year of Darius, the word of the Lord came to the prophet Haggai. This is what the Lord says. Ask the priest what the law says. If someone carries consecrated meat in the fold of their garment, and that fold touches some bread or stew, some wine, olive oil, or other food, does it become consecrated? The priest answered, no. Now, if you're carrying something in your holy garments, and it touches your holy garments, does it automatically become holy? Was the question on the floor. You know, I've seen people lining up to get sweat. You know, handkerchiefs from preachers preaching. That's anointing. Let me have that. You know, they, they touched this. This was his. That was this. There's anointing on it. See, right here, you know, he's asking you up front in the Old Testament. Right. Mm -hmm. Just because it belonged to the priest, it doesn't make it holy. Come on now. And they talk about these, these church indulgences and the church sacred artifacts where this is the blood from the priest that used to right. be over in Hawaii. <laughs> and it, it, it turns back. When they were dying from, he, he caught leprosy for helping people in the white. Right. And when he died, they got a little vial of his blood and every so often it, it liquefies. Uh. And that's food. Right. <laughs> I don't care what nobody right. says. If you sit here waiting to get blessed for some blood from a priest that had leprosy, mm -hmm. you got wow. deeper issues. Because if it does activate, it does come back and he died from leprosy. Then I'm just saying. <laughs> you know, they want 
you got to build a Catholic church, you had to have an uh, artifact from a saint. So there had to be a bone of somebody. They say Peter's head is up under the altar in Rome and all that, you know, all these things, but you got to have a saint's bones to build an altar. You know, that's voodoo. Yeah. But he said, does it come consecrated because it touched the preacher? No. Mm -hmm. Then Haggai, Haggai said, if a person defiled by contact with a dead body touches one of these things, does it become deaf, defiled? Mm -hmm. Yes, the priest replied, it becomes defiled. Okay, then Haggai said, so it is with the people of this nation in my sight, declares the Lord. Whatever they do, whatever they offer here is defiled. So now, defiled doesn't erase, is what the Lord is saying. If you touch something that he's called unclean, then you become unclean. And so then he says, you know, you can't take defiled things and make them holy. Some things just can't be redeemed. As it teaches you in the Bible with mold. You set, you burn mm -hmm. whatever's there. He said, if you can't get it off and wash it off and so, yeah. then burn yeah. the garment. Right. Burn it. And even today with mold, people go crazy. Mold? <laughs> yeah. right. I remember back in the day, they used to put bleach on it. Yeah. The old folks put some Clorox on that mold and go back in there. They weren't, they weren't going to condemn that house. That's the only house there. They had a house with 15 kids. They, you know, you found some mold, get, get that, get that, get that Clorox. <laughs> and raise all them children in that bony house. <laughs> and pass it on to the one. <laughs> I'm just saying, you know. That's the stuff they try to tell you now. <laughs> I'm just saying, if it got on there, it'd get off. You try to tell them, you try to tell them old folks that this ain't coming off. They say, you know, it got on there, it'd get off. <laughs> and you just keep on scrubbing. I'm just, oh, man. Little boy elbow grease. I would use all the grease I got. <laughs> Man, y'all y'all weren't blessed to be raised by them old people from this house. They didn't play. <laughs> right. Now give careful thought to this for this day, considering how things were before one stone was laid on another in the Lord's temple. When anyone came to a heap of twenty measures, there were only ten. When anyone went to the wine vat to draw 50 measures, there were only 20. I struck all the work of your hands with blight, mildew, and hell. Yet you did not return to me, declares the Lord. The Lord is saying, what you were saving up, I cursed. Well, mm -hmm. When you thought you had 50 in the bag, you go back, you got 20. Right, right. So basically he said, because you cursed. Yeah. And what you was hiding and storing up for later, I sent hell and everything else to destroy that. Yeah. So he's letting you know, when you ain't right with God, God ain't right with you. Choose you today who you're going to serve. And from this day on, this 24th day of the ninth month, give careful thought to the day when the foundation of the Lord's temple was laid. Give careful thought. Is there yet any seed left in the barn? Until now, the vine and the fig tree and the pomegranate and the olive trees have not borne fruit. Oh, man. From this day on, I will bless you. They were suffering because they didn't do what God said. Yeah. But he said, now you're going to dedicate this new church. Before you dedicate this new church, think about what happened to make the blessing leave. Right. So if you want to be a blessed church and be blessed again, you got to get the defilement out of your church. Amen. You got to get the defilement out of you. Amen. So before God can start blessing again, whatever is defiling that has to go. And the word of the Lord came to Haggai a second time in the 24th day of the month. Tells Zerubbabel, the governor of Judah, that I'm going to shake the heavens and the earth. No, let's see, whatever God repeats something twice. <laughs> he just said up a little earlier, I'm going to shake up everything. And when he come back and say it again, he, he's not seen now. He's like, you know, I'm emphasizing something for you here. I will overthrow the royal thrones and shatter the power of the foreign kingdoms. I will overthrow chariots and their drivers. Horses with their riders will fall. Each by the sword of his brother. Man. Remember when they were all in siege and then the Chaldeans was out there and everything, get ready to take over the city, and they heard a noise and a rustling, and they were running, they started fighting each other. That's what he's saying right here, you know. When you with me, those that are with you, I will make them turn on each other. Is what God is telling you. Those that are talking about you, saying negative things about you, saying they're gonna start turning on each other. They're going to start talking about each other, mistrusting each other. So this is what he's telling When you're walking with me, you're going to be all right. Mm -hmm. Now on this day, declares the Lord Almighty, 
I will take you, my servant Zerubbabel, the son of Shealtiel, declares the Lord, and I will make you like a signet ring, for I have chosen you, declares the Lord Almighty. So, wow. He's telling Zerubbabel, I'm going to make you like a signet ring. You know, you, you look back even when uh, Je Jezebel tried to get that field, she told the king, give me your ring, give me your signet, and I'll get that land for you. Because she made an order, she made a rule, and put it on, his name on it, sent it out. Yeah. You know, and that's what he said, Zerubbabel, I'm going to make you my signet ring. Wow. Yeah. So whatever you say and whatever yeah, you declare yeah. because you are mine, mm -hmm. whatever you declare is like I spoke it. Yeah. It's yeah. going to be like yeah. I did it. So I'm going to make you my governing power. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. So we don't fear the shaking. We pray for it. Amen. We lean into it. There's people of faith. We wait for some shaking to come around and we need things to be changed. Things need to, they can't go on like this. When I'm seeing whole families begging for food and whole families sitting on the corner, whether they're hustling or not, it's just not something that in the most prosperous country supposedly in the world, with the biggest budget and all this, and we got billions every time they need a plane, they got it. Every time they need a ship, we got it. Every time somebody's at war, we got their back. We got plenty of money to send to wars all around the world. We was in Afghanistan for 20 years. What did we bring back? Nothing. We was in Vietnam about 20 years. What did we bring back from that? Nothing. Korea. You can go out there, wherever we go around the world, getting in other people's business, it's never been successful. Because it's hard to take something from somebody that's willing to die for it. It's our land. We will wait you out. How much money you got? Russia went broke. That's what broke down their economy was fighting Afghanistan. They couldn't do it. Go back through the years. Everybody's attacked that land. Has not won. Why? Ooh. Are they children of Abraham? You think about the Jews, mm -hmm. but they're children of Abraham too. Amen. They're children of Abraham on the other side. Right. <laughs> and as he said, your children will be blessed. This will be their land. Yeah. When you try to take their land from them that was promised by God, that from generation to generation to generation will be their land. Mm -hmm. And Israel is surrounded by enemies on all its side, yet it's still there today. Mm -hmm. And we just talk about an army, you know, all of our war weapons we tested with Israel. They had all our jets, they had all our machine guns. When we came up with the Patriot missile, whatever we come up with, we gave it to Israel. Mm -hmm. Israel used it on their neighbors. Okay, now we can use this. Israel was our proving ground. And we all knew it. So, you know, they talk about a mighty army. They got everything we got. Mm -hmm. Then I went to Psalms 137. By the rivers of Babylon, we sat and wept. Okay. When we remembered Zion. Yes. Oh, man, when you remember what church used to be like. Well, you remember what folks used to do. You remember when it used to be a safe community. You remember when people actually cared about other folks. Yeah. You remember when a neighbor needed something, he could count on another neighbor. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and I remember years ago when a man, I was listening to a preacher, he was talking about today's houses are built with outside windows. Mm -hmm. So they don't want you to know your neighbors. Right. And then you go straight in your garage. So you don't know the people. You speak and everything, but do you know anything? And I can, right now, I can still remember all my neighbors on the street I was growing up with, and all of them. And each one of them, I knew them by name. I knew where they lived. I knew two of them worked at the boys' home. They was always threatening to send me and my brothers to the boys' home. <laughs> Mr. Campbell, Mr. Kent. They always say, Mr. Kent telling me all the time, I'm taking you to work with me. <laughs> you know, he's going to take us to the boys' home. Mrs. Campbell was the nosiest one on the block. Her son right now is a judge in Aurora, but I remember his mama and his daddy. And every time I did something, she would always be in that window all day and night. Mm. And she had night vision. If you was out there doing stuff, she would still turn you in at night. <laughs> so she had night vision for the army. Because <laughs> she would call and tell when you've been outside and mom get home. I know you was out there. And Miss Cameron done bust us out again. But I'm just saying, you know, that was another time. But we remembered how Zion used to be. There on the popular. We hung our hearts. For there our characters asked us to, for songs. Mm -hmm. Our tormentors demanded songs of joy. They said, sing us one of the songs of Zion. Mm -hmm. How can we sing the songs of the Lord when we in a foreign land? Mm -hmm. People torturing you and going on. And they entertain me. Make me happy. Mm -hmm. Man, you mistreating me. You want me to sing and dance with you? Mm -hmm. And they said, we, we hung our instruments on the tree. We're not playing any of the songs of Zion. We're not playing any of the music of Zion. You know, and, and the tormentors were talking about, y'all had some good music. You know, sing that again. And he says, 
How can we sing the songs of the Lord when we're in a foreign land? That, that, that's made for praise in Jerusalem. That's made for praise in our place. Now you want us to take the glory of Jerusalem and the praise of Jerusalem and sing it for you over here. He said, if I forget you, Jerusalem, may my right hand forget its skill. May my tongue cling to the roof of my mouth if I do not remember you. If I did not consider Jerusalem my highest joy. But they're saying, you may have took me to another place or you took me out of where I should be, mm -hmm. but may I forget all my skills if I forget what God has done for me. Mm -hmm. Jerusalem is representing what God did for them. Mm -hmm. If I forget how God blessed me, yeah. May I never sing again. If I forget how God brought me through, may I never dance again. If I forget that God healed me, may I never think about anything else again. Don't ever let me forget how I was blessed in a blessed land. How God has blessed me. How God has brought me through. How God has kept me. How God continually keeps me. Satan wants you to forget that where you come from. He wants you to forget where you're at. I'm a child of the king. I've been blessed by the king. He has declared me healthy. He's declared me whole. He's declared me fool. And Satan wants me to forget that. Hang my harp up on the tree and just forget about what God has done for me. No, 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 no. See, because the joy in me has nothing to do with location. The joy in me has nothing to do with finances. The joy in me has nothing to do with health. The joy in me has nothing to do with where I'm going through and what I'm going to go to. The joy in me is from God. And the joy in me that's from God will sustain me no matter what I'm going through. That's what he said. Wow. It's my highest joy to think about how God is blessing me. You know, I was talking with Deacon this morning. You know, I'll be 66 this year. You know, the life expectancy of a black man is 67. <laughs> I'm like, oh man, I'm getting there. <laughs> What's next year going to be like? <laughs> I said, I got to get to 70 at least. You know what I'm saying? I'm trying to set down, you know. And I got there. We were talking about different relatives and their age and everything. And then I talked about, you know, my dad's brothers, all them were alcoholics and drank a fifth of liquor a day and smoked cigarettes without filters. And they all live in the 90s. Right. So I'm trying to do some stuff, right? You know, I may get the weight together and everything, but the other stuff, I'm, you know. But. Some of them will be, <laughs> you know, I'm just but I'm just saying, you know, when you listen to the statistic, right. and it says seven years after you retire, most people die. So, okay, I've been retired seven years. I passed that. Oh, okay. So, so I, I'll get ready to change some of these things. They try to right. But they spoke over me, and when we get together and celebrate my 90th birthday, <laughs> you know, right. I was say, see, I told you so. <laughs> you know? But I said, wow. But just the thing, you know, and it used to be a habit every time I'm close to my birthday, I get close to somebody shooting at me in a wreck or something. And it took years for that to break. But I mean, every year, about a week or so before my birthday, something would happen. I was celebrating, what, my uh, 17th birthday. And dude come in drunk and shot a shotgun in the floor and all the buckshot busts up and hit my, all in my afro. Oh. And I'm sitting there drinking here. Like, he done killed my high. <laughs> <laughs> I was celebrating my birthday, having a good, he come so in. Talking about, y'all know my breath stink. Man, ain't nobody said about my breath stink. He drank like three or four bottles of Listerine a day. He was crazy. And I was living, I'm sleeping on his couch. I don't know how all that worked out. Right. But anyway, when he came in and he grabbed the shotgun, he stumbled around and just shot. And right at my feet, he said, Poof. I said, man. But I had a, you know, then one time I'm coming back close to my birthday and we going through the mountains in Germany and I'm with these two old Vietnam veterans that are crazy and they driving like a 90 mile an hour. It's raining so hard I couldn't see the Cordoba emblem on the car. And these two in the front seat and I'm in the back seat. And they passed the liquor and they driving. All these curse fools. And I was just so glad to get home that night. I told Janice when I got to, oh God, I didn't think I was going to make it. <laughs> and then a wreck happened in front of us and one pointed and told the other one that way. And he never slowed down nothing. He just went between the two cars and kept on pushing. And I'm like, oh man, you know, just some of the crazy things. Like I was really superstitious around my birthday. But I broke that. <laughs> I broke that. Amen. Yes, he did. He had a purpose for me. He had to get me here for today. He said, Remember, Lord, the Edomites did on the day of Jerusalem fell? Tear it down, they cried. Tear down its foundations. The Edomites, they they cousins. I'm about to tear down Jerusalem. You know, your family, your relatives tell them, I'm glad they finally caught up with you. <laughs> Daughter of Babylon, doomed to destruction, happy is the one who repays you according to what you've done to us. Now they turn it around. 
We sitting here in Babylon in captivity. Well, happy will the day be when you get what's coming to you. What goes around, come around. <laughs> That's what they were saying. They were telling the Babylonians, you ain't always going to be in charge. You ain't always going to be on time. You ain't always going to be the ones making decisions. You ain't going to always be the ones passing laws. You are always yes, going right. to be injustice, yes, treating yes, people yes, injustice. Yes, yes. People thinking they have power and clout now is not always going to be like That's that. Right. Yes. And the, the Bible clearly says the way you treat the widow, the orphan, and the yeah, poor. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And our country has got to the place where they ignore all of them. Yes. Mm -hmm. They don't care that people don't have fair housing. They don't care that people have good education. Right. They don't care that people have this. You know, they just don't care. If it doesn't take care of what they want and what they desire, they can care less what everybody else has. Mm -hmm. But oh, they're going to dance on your grave. Mm -hmm. Happy is the one who repays you. The people paying you back are going to enjoy it. Mm -hmm. That's what I said. Mm -hmm. I remember when Rudy was running for president. And he was so the forerunner. He's sitting back while everybody else was arguing and fighting and all this stuff. He just gonna walk right in. He got to the end, he had the lowest score of anybody. Right. And now today he's considered to be crazy. Yeah. Man standing out in front of a feed company talking about would die running down his face looking crazy, talking about the election was stolen, went to court time and time again, looking crazy and crazy. Now he needs a lawyer. Yeah. You already lose his law license. But he was on top. He was riding that wave. Yeah, he was yeah, right there. Yeah, he was the right yeah, hand. He was the president's lawyer. Yeah, president. Now the president himself is running. Come on now. He got more lawyers than Carter got liver pills. <laughs> <laughs> you got to be of a certain generation. <laughs> I don't know. Carter made a lot of liver pills. <laughs> but every time you look, you know, he got a lawyer for this and a lawyer for that. He got another reality show. His reality show knows now it's called Indict Trump. <laughs> and it's on, it's on all around the country. It, it, it's a traveling show like Joseph with his multicolored coat. You know, you had that Joseph, it's in Chicago, it's in New York. Well, Trump is being sued in Florida, he's being sued in Georgia, he's being sued in New York. You know, Trump has got a reality show going. Hey, evil cannot win forever. And it's as happy as the one who seizes your infants and dashes them against the rock. Man, these, these Hebrews weren't playing. They said, we'd be glad to see your kids destroyed. Not only you, but your children. So my first point, as I get older, I'm tempted to lose hope for mankind because it's lost its meaning of truth. Then I remember that God wins in the end. Amen. Every time you think things are getting crazy, every time you think things are changing, I remember that God wins in the end. Amen. When you think that they've winning more stuff against you, you think that, you know, truth has just been so distorted. You know, everything, everybody has their own truth. Everybody has their own reality. People talking about live your truth. There is no your truth. It's God's truth or no truth. It's simple as that. But my reality tells me that I was a boy born in a girl's body and all that. And so I got to correct God's mistake. You don't correct God's mistake. If God made you one way, he meant for you to be that way. Now you can listen to these people telling you all these lies. But just all these things, you know, people just taking evil and meant it for good. I remember, you know, when Michael Jackson was singing about it's bad, it's bad. You know, bad used to mean bad. Then Michael made a little song, it's bad, it's bad, I'm bad. And now bad got changed. You know? And I remember back in the day, you know, when we was little kids and somebody called you black, that was a fight. Right. <laughs> Who you calling black? <laughs> you, know, you, know, you know, people used to fight. James Brown came out, said I'm black and I'm proud. Then all of a sudden, everybody was proud. <laughs> you know, I'm just saying. But I remember back in the day, folks, that was a fight in the playground. <laughs> but I'm just saying, they try to distort things and change things from generation to generation. But God is still in control. He's still in control. And he wins in the end. So whose side are you on? You got to be on God's side if you want to win. Then my second point, walk in the spirit. <laughs> and feel his gentle nudging you along this way. In 2 Corinthians 5, it says, One, for we know that if the earthly tent we live in is destroyed, we have a building from God, an eternal house in heaven, yeah. not built by human hands. Yeah. Meanwhile, we groan, yeah. longing to be clothed instead in our heavenly oh, dwelling. Yeah. Hey. <laughs> what are you talking about, groaning for that <laughs> heavenly body? <laughs> 
Today was just a I laid in bed till like seven thirty. I never do that. I just the body just said not today. Right. You know, and I was just laying and chilling, but I, I gotta get you know, I got to go to work today. <laughs> you know? But I'm just saying, when it says this body is grown and this body is wearing out, yeah. as you get older and older. Yeah. You know, I was telling somebody the other day, you know, we you gotta get at least eight hours laying down. <laughs> it don't mean eight hours sleep. But if you don't rest these bones for eight hours, you you have a little catch here. Yeah. Stay there, you know. Just keep on living. You get up and you be popping fresh. You see that stuff popping all over. I'm just saying. Man, I went to two weeks with my hand was trying to act like I was ready. Every time I moved it, it jumped. You know, it was like it was jumping out of gear. And I kept doing the hand exercises. So it's gone. Now praise the Lord. <laughs> It was a couple of weeks there, with, you know. I'm like, oh man, I still, I still use this head. I need this head, you know. But I'm just saying, you had to pray about it, Lord. And you know. We said, but we, we close to being this heavenly dwelling, you know. I'm gonna put some miles on this one. You know what I'm saying? That's what I was trying to tell my grandson that day. When I was young, we always wanted to get rid of cars and get a new car. And all the cars we had was, oh, that's two, three years old. I gotta get rid of that. Now all them cars are worth a hundred thousand dollars or something, you know? I was like, man, if I'd have known what I had back then. These cars, we couldn't wait. What you driving? Oh, you driving something five years old, man? So, you know, go trade it in. I remember I had my 74 Grand Prix and I went to Dylan. He wanted to sell me a 78, you know, Grand Prix. I said, this car is half the size of mine. You will charge me more money for a car that's smaller than mine and the engine's smaller than mine. I'm going to keep my Grand Prix, man. I think you beat me for to give you my Grand Prix for this little thing. You know? And I mean, I'm just saying, keep on living. We want to be in the new dwelling. Because when we are clothed, we are not found naked. For while we are in this tent, we groan and are burdened. Because we did not wish to be unclothed, but to be clothed instead with our heavenly dwelling. So that what is mortal will be swallowed up by life. You see, we think of life is mortality. But what this scripture is saying here, what is mortal is swallowed up by life. Life is God. Life is the Holy Soul. Life is the holy dwelling place. So what I'm thinking, I'm living life now. Paul said to die is gain. So if you want life, you know, think about what life is. See, he's saying right here, I'm alive and we're talking about it. But he's saying I don't really have life until I leave this tent. Then I have life. So, you know, I mean, you, know, you, you got to figure out, Paul, Paul was deep. Like this, Peter said, his, wetter, his letters are waiting. <laughs> Peter said, I'm a fisherman. This brother deep. He went to school and all that. He knows stuff I don't know. Wow. Be swallowed up by life. Now the one who has fashioned us for this very purpose is God, who has given us the spirit as a deposit, a guarantee of what's to come. See, that deposit that's, that's something, you know. I used to, back in the old days, we used to have layaway. Yeah. <laughs> you put stuff in layaway. Yeah, yeah. I ain't got all the money now. Right, right. But I'm going to give you a deposit so you'll take it off yourself. Right, yeah. And if I don't come back and make these payments each week, then you get to keep my deposit and you put your stuff back on your shelf. Yeah. And you used to be, oh, I got to get back there. I got, I got, you know, I done made two or three payments. I, I got to get this. Because he can take that same TV and sell it to somebody else, you know? And so what he's telling right now, we got a deposit of the Spirit. We haven't got the Spirit God has promised us. We have the Holy Ghost. We have the anointing of that. But that's only a deposit. He said, you will have a body that will never get tired. You will have a body that will never be cut, never scarred. You will have 20-20 vision. And I'm just saying, 20-20, we put that other 20% in there when you get to heaven. You will have 100% vision when you get to heaven. We got 20 20 because we in flesh. But when you get to where he's at, you're going to have that 100% vision. You'll be able to see things, know things. I'm just saying, you know, when he talks about this heavenly dwelling. Wow. He said that deposit. Therefore, we are always confident and know that as long as we are at home in the body, we're away from the Lord. So if you wasn't sure whether or not you're alive, if you're still here, you're away from the Lord. <laughs> you're not where you're going to be. You're not what you haven't made it. You know, some people wake up and, you know, Mark, Mark Twain used to say, 
I get up and the first thing I do is check the paper and see if my name's in the obituary. <laughs> And he said, if I'm not in the paper, I get up and start moving. <laughs> yeah. So I'm just saying, yeah. that was what I'm saying. So if you were here in the body, then you're away from the Lord. Mm -hmm. But then he gives you this little nugget. For we live by faith mm -hmm. and not by sight. Yes. Thank you, Lord. Faith, Amen. not by sight. Yeah. It was funny, I'm watching my daughter and son-in-law look at all these different houses. They come back, this one worked, this one don't work, that one worked, this one they don't I'm, I'm talking about my faith. I've already seen y'all moving in. <laughs> not, not just to get them out of my house. <laughs> that would have been a long time. But, no, 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 no. but by faith, I see they're going to get the place they're looking for. They're going to have what they want. And the ones that don't have what they want, God is not going to open that door. But when you realize by faith that he has a place for you, he has what you want. And when your faith lines up with his faith, and you start declaring it. When you walk through the door in that place, you don't know because the Holy Ghost going to hit you. You're going to get happy when you come across the threshold. You're going to say, this is my place. This is my place that God has got me. Yeah, when we bought our first house on Union Street. When I walked out, I told Janice, this is the one I want. We went to that house. And this is what I've been looking for. It's like the house I grew up in with all the bedrooms upstairs and all this stuff. And it had the basement. It had to look right. It had everything I wanted except for the fireplace. That's the only thing it didn't have. But I said, this is what I want. And when I walked through that door, I knew this is the one. So we walk by faith. Not by sight. If I go by what I see, if I go by what I hear, if I go by what you're telling me and I'm telling me, then that won't make it. But I go by faith. My faith in God has brought me this far. My faith in God has provided. My faith has delivered me. I've had things that'll knock you down and make you feel like you don't want to go any further, but my faith says get on up. My faith says it's all right. My faith says you will live another day. My faith says this is not the last battle. My faith says God says keep on going. By faith, not by sight. Never look at the giant. You see that big giant, you little boy standing there with some rocks in the street. But faith telling that giant get ready to fall. And not only that, I'm going to cut his head off. Let him know he ain't getting back up. Goliath never got back up off that field. They had to get a new giant. I'm just saying, you know, think about it. This little teenage boy told that giant, you going to die today. He came out day after day for months. Send the man out here you think can beat me. Every morning he got up with the same old boat. They all in the tent. I ain't going out there. You go out there. Even King Saul, tallest one in Israel, but he wasn't a giant. Cut Saul back there. I give you my daughter and all the money tax free. Saul throwing everything in the pot. You know, who gonna go out there and fight this giant for? Anybody but me. Is what he was saying. <laughs> they come bringing a little harp player. And he even tried to discuss it with his brothers. Get them on. You know, the Lord gave me a, something here. What about this giant? Why is he dis disrespecting the living God? Look, 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 who's watching them few sheep? You get on back to the house and quit, get out of grown folk business. And David said, can I say anything without y'all snapping on me? Man, I ain't been here for a couple minutes and y'all jumping all down my throat. What will be done for the man? And David wasn't even looking for a wife. He wasn't even looking for that, you know. Wasn't even looking for prosperity. He playing his own, you know, playing for the king, living in he's living pretty well. But then when he came in there, the spirit moved on him. Go down there and see what's happening. See what they're afraid of down there. See that they're not living by faith, but they're living by sight. When you see people just living by sight, they don't understand the faith. He tell you why are you paying tithes, why are you going to church? Because see these, these tithes here, these are seeds. These are seeds. This is what's going to take me and the generation after me and the generation after this. These are seeds. Y'all don't know this is a crop coming. This is a crop. I don't realize why you do it. Why you sort of, why you go down there and do this? Why you volunteer? Why you go down there and cut the grass? Why you go down there and clean the church? Because they see. They see. I don't have what I'm going to have, but I know I'm planting the seed, and when that harvest comes in, it's going to take care of me and mine 
from generation after generation to generation. He said the windows of heaven will be open and he pour out more than it be shaped down, pressed together, and run it over. I'm looking at running over. I don't know. I walk by faith, not by sight. My last point, never allow circumstances to cause you to hang up your praise. They said they hung their harps by the tree because they, they just couldn't sing a praise song no more. Satan wants to take you out of praise. Satan wants to take you out of joy. Satan wants to take you out of counting it all is joy. If Satan can make you focus on what you're going through instead of what you're going to, yeah. Don't tell me about what I'm going through Because I got to get to where I'm going to Man. I'm going to tell you it's rough Ain't nobody else got it like you Why is God mad at me? You know what I mean? Satan wants you to doubt your faith It ain't happening by now When is it going to happen? But oh no I got to get through this to get to that I got to get through this to get to that You know I remember when I went out for football, you know, and I did two or three days. But uh, I came to play football. This man talking about running up and down the field, running up and down the field, and the slowest one, you know, you got to keep running until you beat somebody. And it's me and this dude, man, he was like 200 something pounds, and I couldn't beat him. With, you know, and I was one of the fastest dudes at school without the equipment. So I don't know if it was the mind or what. But I did this for like laying in the mud and kicking all that. So I realized I didn't have a desire for football. <laughs> It just wasn't my calling. Man, standing there cussing me out and stuff like that. See, I'm ready to go home and get a pistol. Because I don't even like the way you talk to me. So I realized that wasn't for me. Basketball players. I could beat most of them down to the playground at Ohio Street. We're down there every day. Hook. You know, we get to the gym, run up here 20 times before we play ball. That ain't how you play ball. We get on the court and we go. <laughs> you know? Now you got to do wind splits. Now, I'm already winning. Man. Come on. Let's, let's play. Let's play. Right. Well, I realized I was never going to be an athlete. But you got to have that dedication. Yes, yeah. Never let nobody tell you to hang up your praise. Yeah, 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 yeah. You got to be a dedicated praise. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You got to praise like Michael, Michael Jordan practiced. You got to praise with faith. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, Jordan had been retired two or three years, and a young dude come to the bowl talking about Jordan was old and couldn't play. So Jordan showed up in gym shoes and beat the young man. Right. He came out of retirement. Right. To shut this boy up. <laughs> you know, it had nothing to do with him. He got all these trophies. He got all these awards. He got all this money. And whatever else. But some little young rookie came to Bull and said he's going to be the next great Bull. And Jordan went down and told him, this is what you got to be. So don't let nobody tell you to hang up your praise. When you want to outpraise me, this is what you got to be. You want to come and get what I've already established? This is what you got to be. You got to outpraise me. You got to shout louder than me, dance louder than me, praise louder than me. Tell God more than I do. I thank you for everything you've done in my life. I thank you for where you brought me. And I thank you for how you brought me through. Amen. My God is an awesome God. He's worthy of praise. My God don't need me to praise for him. He can praise for himself. But he said, if I don't pray, he'll make some rocks get into it. i tell you, that's the original rock concert. He said, I'll make these rocks praise me. The mountains declare my glory. The mountains declare my beauty. He said, the mountains. Mountains, witness. You've been here for all these thousands of years. You witness between me and Israel. And the Lord said, the mountains are my witness. Who's your witness? <laughs> and your witness, can he stand from generation to generation? Can he stand through the floods and the fires and all that? Will your witness still be standing there with you? But my witness will be there with me. My witness is still. His beginnings are from, his, from old. He's coming. He's an awesome guy. Amen. My time is up. Amen. 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 Magnify.
about the Lord. Yes, Lord. Amen. Does anybody here know the Lord is your Savior? But a prayer between you and eternity. Amen. And you know, as simple as ABC. A, admit you're a sinner. B, believe he died for your sins. And C, confess him as Lord and Savior. And you shall be saved. And you shall be saved. Amen. Lord, I thank you for this morning. I thank you for your grace and your mercies that I do every day. Lord, I thank you for the challenges. Because if I didn't have hard times, I wouldn't know what the good times are. I thank you for the things I go through. Because I know when I go through this test, there's going to be a praise on the other end. Lord, I'm going to praise you with all that's within me. I'm going to praise you, Lord. I don't care what anybody else says or anybody else thinks. I will praise the Lord. Praise him with all that I have and all that I am. Praise you, Lord. Praise your name this morning. There's a praise in my heart. There's a praise in my mind. There's a praise in my spirit. Praise him this morning. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. You are more than faithful in all things. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Praise your name. Yes, Lord. Amen. Amen. Remember, keep living and leaving a legacy. Yes. God bless you. Thank you.